Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Shitmech and I bring two decades of maintenance and operational experience on BK-117 series helicopters to help fellow simmers. In this episode, we're going to be exploring flight control systems, AFCS. Now, AFCS is a catch-all term for an automated system that is given some authority over an aircraft control system in order to, at a minimum, stabilize the craft in flight. AFCS is not exclusive to the H-145 or even to helicopters. Fixed-wing jets, drones, missiles, and spaceships all use some or all of the AFCS principles that I will talk about in this video. Before you can have an autopilot system, there are more primitive systems that must be first installed and operational. A hydraulic boost system reduces the amount of force required for the system to overcome aerodynamic reset forces. These reset forces are generated by the lift and drag that are created by aerodynamic interactions with the blades. They act to return the airfoil to zero pitch relative to airflow. The next layer that must be added is the Stability Augmentation System, or SAS. The SAS dampens disturbances in the air and stabilizes the angular velocity of the helicopter, pitch, roll, and yaw. The SAS does not keep track of the orientation of the aircraft, and therefore is not responsible for returning the aircraft to any pre-selected orientation, or attitude. That is the role of the next two systems. The Attitude and Heading Reference System, or AHARS, is responsible for maintaining awareness of the current attitude, pitch, and roll, and heading, yaw, of the helicopter. The AHARS system uses the sensors in the SAS system to validate changes in attitude and heading. The system is also the first system that the pilot is aware of. It is responsible for providing the information that is used to generate the pilot's attitude indication and horizontal situation indication. The parallel trim system is the first FCS system that the pilot shares authority with. It physically moves the same controls the pilot uses to orient the aircraft according to pilot's selected parameters. Finally, the combination of the interface devices and internal computers receive inputs from the pilot and send signals to the trim systems in order to affect the aircraft appropriately. The hydraulic power system provides an extreme amount of mechanical assistance compared to what is actually needed to overcome the reset forces. At some point along the boost curve, starting from zero and continuing to 3000 PSI, it becomes counterproductive to stabilized flight. Essentially, it becomes like trying to fly the aircraft with an overcooked spaghetti noodle for a cyclic. Therefore, force trim is provided. The first component of force trim is force feedback. Spring forces are used to hold the stick in a predetermined position. Any deflection of the stick will produce a resultant feedback force proportional to the displacement from center. The second component of force trim is manual trim, also known as beep trim. Beep trim slowly changes the spring center position using a four-way trim switch. The final component of force trim is trim release. By pressing the force trim release button, the spring forces are removed and the stick moves freely without feedback until the button is released. The new spring center is set to the position of the stick when the button is released. The stability augmentation system is a very interesting system. Consisting of two basic elements, it works constantly in the background and without any input from or even awareness of the pilot. The two elements are the control loop and the feedback loop. The feedback loop uses fiber optic gyroscopic sensors to detect angular velocity, the speed at which something is spinning, determine changes in aircraft attitude, pitch, roll, and yaw. Control loop uses smart electro-mechanical actuators, or SEMAs, to make minor adjustments to the flight control surfaces. The H145 has gyros integrated into the attitude and heading reference system. But this photo illustrates the fiber optic windings targeting the three cardinal axes. To understand the operation of the fog, imagine you have two riflemen that are equidistant from a target in opposite direction. 
Assuming they fire the same round from the same rifle at the exact same time, their rounds will impact the target at exactly the same time. Now, let's move the target closer to one and farther from the other. If they fire the same round from the same rifle at the exact same time, then one will impact the target before the other. Knowing the speed of the bullets and the time it takes the second bullet to strike the target after the first, we can perform some calculations and determine how far the target has moved from center. Now imagine instead of bullets, the riflemen are firing lasers around counter-rotating but equidistant fiber optic cables that terminate on a common sensor. Since the speed of light is constant, then if they both fired at the same time and the distance is exactly equal, each of the pulses will reach the sensors at exactly the same time. However, if we repeat the process, only this time we rotate the entire assembly before the lasers reach the sensor, then it increases the distance that one pulse has to travel and decreases the other, causing one pulse to reach the sensor before the other. Since light has a frequency, this is constantly measured by the system as phase matched sine waves. As the aircraft rotates about the axis, the two waveforms experience a phase shift proportional to the speed of rotation. The faster the craft rotates, the more pronounced the phase shift. The feedback loop sends signals to the control loop, which attempts to arrest the rotation. The control system uses smart electromechanical actuators, SEMAs, which operate very quickly and precisely, however, are limited in their authority. They can only move the flight control surfaces a fraction of their total range. These are arranged in series with the traditional control loop, adding to and taking away from the pilot's inputs. On the lateral, longitudinal, and yaw axes of the H-145, they are mounted in a dual or back-to-back -back configuration. There is only one installed on the collective axis. The next level required for automatic flight control is the AHARS. As previously stated, the AHARS hosts the fiber optic gyros. It also uses accelerometers to determine the instantaneous pitch and roll, and magnetometers to determine instantaneous heading. Gravitational accelerometers work like a plumb bob. They maintain a direction toward the center of the Earth, and when the aircraft tilts, they measure the angle between their orientation and the gravity vector. Magnetometers use a mix of science and mysticism to allow the computer to determine the angle form between the current aircraft heading and the Earth's magnetic field. Since computers don't have eyes and can't read a compass, use magnetometers to inform the system. The next level required for autonomous flight is the parallel trim system. Parallel trim assemblies are mounted in the floor of the aircraft and act to move and influence the movement of the pilot's control input devices, collective, cyclic, and pedals. The autopilot system uses the parallel trim to recenter the SEMAs and control the aircraft. Here's a crude representation of the entire system. Airbus uses what they call a flex ball cable known here to transmit cyclic inputs to the flight control components in the cabin roof. The cyclic stick is mechanically linked to the parallel trim shown here. The orange box represents the input lever of the parallel trim. Up top, in green, we have a dual SEMA installed in series between the cyclic flex ball and the hydraulic actuator shown in red. Beyond the hydraulics, a bell crank transmits lateral actuation to vertical to affect the rotor system. When the stick is moved, the SEMAs act as a push rod, transmitting the inputs via the flex ball cable directly to the hydraulic actuator. Also notice that the input lever parallel trim is affected logically. Now let's assume the pilot has not made any control inputs. However, an aerodynamic disturbance has caused the aircraft to pitch unintentionally. SEMAs react to eliminate the unintended rotation. Once the unintended motion has ceased, the SEMA returns to its neutral position. However, this can lead to issues where the aircraft misinterprets pilot input as undesirable movement. The SEMA might attempt to compensate for the pilot's input,
causing the aircraft to appear to be sluggish and unresponsive. Therefore, Airbus has implemented an extended version of SAS called CSAS, or Combined Stability Augmentation System. This system takes note of the pilot's inputs and anticipates the intent. The system will then supplement the pilot's input to achieve the desired result when the aircraft reaction does not match the assumed intent. This causes the aircraft to be significantly, although artificially, more responsive. Here we take a look at the parallel trim actuator in greater detail. The illustration represents the side view of a parallel trim actuator. The orange box represents the input lever. The input lever is connected to a shaft that connects to an input adapter. The input adapter is connected to a coil spring that provides a torsional force in response to uncoiling or additional coiling. The other end of the spring is connected to an output adapter, which is connected to another shaft. The input and output adapters are not physically connected, but share micro switches that send a discrete or binary signal when they are in alignment. The output adapter shaft connects to a reduction gear assembly, which transmits rotational force through an electromagnetic clutch to a final gear that is meshed with a worm gear. The worm gear allows an electric motor to rotate the assembly, but does not allow the assembly to rotate the motor. More importantly, it holds it in place. When a pilot moves the input lever, the input adapter rotates. However, the worm gear does not allow the rest of the gear train to rotate. Therefore, the spring is coiled. The coiling of the spring provides a feedback force to the pilot that is proportional to the distance from rest the stick is moved. As the pilot relaxes the input against the cyclic, the spring forces the cyclic back to its natural center. When the pilot actuates the beep trim or the autopilot commands a movement, the motor begins to spin. This motion is transmitted through the worm gear, through the electromechanical clutch and reduction gear, into the coil spring and input and output levers. If the cyclic is allowed to move, then the input and output adapters move together and the micro switch assemblies are never misaligned. When the pilot presses the force trim button, the electro-mechanical clutch is opened, severing the mechanical link between the worm gear and the rest of the system. If the pilot deflects the cyclic, there is no longer anything restricting the output adapter assembly from rotating and therefore it does along with the reduction gear train and half of the electromagnetic clutch assembly. When the pilot releases the trim button, the clutch re-engages and the new cyclic spring center is sent. Again, if the pilot moves the cyclic without pressing the trim release, even if attempting to move the stick back to its previous center, then the worm gear will restrict the movement and the coil spring coil, forcing the stick back to its new center when released. The autopilot control panel Installed Navigation Management System, Garmin 750 for the H145, and Air Data Systems, the aircraft is now capable of measuring and stabilizing its orientation in space and making measured and intentional control inputs in order to achieve autonomous control of the aircraft.